All right, so let's get to the new Kirkland golf ball test. Uh, yesterday, we were out at Bayville Country Club in Virginia Beach. Great place. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, so everybody spoke really highly of that. So thank you, Bayville, for having us out yesterday. And we tested the 2019 Kirkland four-piece versus the 2016 Kirkland four-piece versus the Titleist Pro V1X as a four-piece control. So a lot of interest, a lot of people emailing, asking how this ball performs. Let's get to the performance first and the durability second. Performance-wise, things look pretty good, right? Yeah, I mean the they're consistent. Yeah, the the so ball speeds were up by a mile an hour or so on average of um, all the testers, and but the spin rate was higher too. So Tony, what kind of ball, in your opinion, does that look like from a comparable standpoint for people to you know wrap their head around? Yeah, so so based on what we've seen so far, and you know we're gonna try and get some compression measurements on this, but to answer the immediate question, certainly what we're seeing suggests a higher compression ball. So probably firmer total construction um but it also looks i would describe it as kind of a high spin across the board so a little spinny off the dryer high spin off an iron high spin off a ledge uh and if i were to just kind of based on that character the characterization of what we've seen so far without going through the data in complete and total detail kind of reads a lot like a vulvic s4 and i'm not saying they're the same ball we've cut them open we know they're not the same ball they come from different factories but from a performance perspective, that seems to be the most comparable at this point. And we'll know more once we really crunch the data and go through it. So if you go back to our ball test and look at kind of the, the launch and spin charts, I think that's probably going to be the closest one based on what we know now. All right. So overall, from a subjective standpoint, you know, what what did you uh, you're a great golfer, all American golf, former all American golfer. You know, uh, you're particular about your golf ball that you play. What did you think of this golf ball? I mean, I like a little bit of a f softer feeling golf ball. Um, and it felt like that. I mean, it was one of those balls that you you felt like you you can really attack your chip shots around the greens because it's soft. And that's what I like. That's what I prefer. So I can check it up there and, and be a bit more aggressive. And it definitely felt like that. And I definitely... So softer oh, feel overall. The cover feels a little softer. Yeah, I mean... I have a, yeah, I have, I have, um, I have a weird, uh, experiment when I, when I, when I look at balls and just to see how soft they are, I, I kind of put it in my mouth and bite down to see how, I don't know, I do it. This one, I pretty much went through the whole cover. It was that soft. It was like an oh, old bolata. Ooh, you canined right through it, huh? Yeah. I got my fangs. Which we'll get to the durability of the cover in a minute. But overall, ball speeds seem to be so far. We'll run the numbers. Full test results will be published next week for everybody out there. But for right now, just quick glance, ball speed seems to be up. Spin seems to be up. Carry seems to be up so far. So far, yeah. Comparative to the other two balls in the test. So that's performance. But let's put up performance to the side for a second and talk about an issue that we have seen, not just in our own testing, but a lot of people that are out there that are getting the ball in now for the very first time and getting their first few strikes with it, first couple rounds with it. And that is a durability issue with the cover that I haven't seen since a Titleist Bellata. So what do you think about that, Tony? I mean, multiple people are sending us pictures with these smiley faces that I, I've never seen a ball in modern era like since I've, you know, the last 10, 20 years cut like this, this, this easily. Yeah. I sort of, uh, knowing what we knew at the time, I made an educated guess that the cover was going to be the problem with this ball. Now, of course I thought it was going to be a problem because of thickness. If you look at the, the, the past urethane balls that have come out of that factory, the cover has been really thick urethane, really thick urethane covers. This one is, is actually thinner. It looks to be, we haven't put calipers on it yet, but it looks to be just a hair thicker than a Pro V1, for example. So in that realm, but but my God, do they have an issue with the cutting? Uh, just splits, right? And not, sometimes you see balls split on the seam. So you think, all right, there was a bonding issue when the two layers came together. Uh, but we're seeing this ball cut literally all over the ball in addition to, I would describe as, as excessive scuffing. So, you know, long story short, it looks like they have some sort of chemistry problem, whether that's with the with the col the polyurethane itself, or or with the bonding between the, the the cover and the casing layer. It's 
it's an issue, right? A golf ball should not do this, right? You shouldn't, as, as one guy who put it in play, say he burned through six over the course of, of 18 rounds in terms of just cutting them wide, or 18 holes, rather, cut six balls over 18 holes. Like, that That absolutely should not happen. Uh, it definitely can't happen at $45 a dozen, and even at $15 a dozen, you won't find another ball with this kind of durability issue. Question, you know, I, I, some of the people out there will go, for a dollar a ball, right, who gives a shit? So what do you say to that? Like, a dollar a ball that performs well. Yeah, I, it, it really depends on the math, right? Uh, the long math and how many balls you lose. If you lose six balls around, yeah, maybe the math works. But if you're a guy who plays one or two balls around typically, if that, and you get one round out of a Titleist or one round of a Bridgestone or sometimes two or three out of a, out of a Titleist or a Bridgestone or a Shrixon or something with you know legitimate cover durability and you're burning through six around with a Kirkland, the math doesn't add up, right? At that point, you're actually spending more on a Kirkland than you would a box of premium leading market balls. Yeah, so, so obviously this this is the first batch, right? So obviously not a good batch so far from what we've seen. I'm sure that they could potentially get some of this fixed in, in later batches, but this is, a, this is a problem because they had, they had a real uh, unicorn on their hand with that original – Kirkland that obviously this is not that but they're playing off that a little bit you know they're they were oh for sure yeah and so the problem is going to be the what is the average golfer going to think is the average golfer that comes into Costco going to think oh man I've heard about this Kirkland ball I'm going to buy this and even if you've heard that they came out with a new ball and know it to be different are they going to know about these issues I think they're going to find out real quick if they put them in play well, we've, we've cut open some, and what I've noticed too is just the cover itself. I don't know of any other balls that we've cut open where I can literally split it in half and then pull the outside cover right off. That's not supposed to happen, you know? Uh, you know, usually, so if, if you're dealing with a thicker cover, especially if you're dealing with an Ionomer slash Sterling ball, you can usually wedge a butter knife, for example, between, between the, the core and the, and the cover and it, it separates pretty quickly. And with thicker covers, generally they, they separate. I don't want to say quickly. You kind of have to work your way around and deeper and around and deeper. But, yeah, if you can practically pull it off with, with just your finger, it's yeah, there's, there's some sort of bonding issue. And what I would add here, and this, this is a potentially interesting ripple, right? As if you, let's say it's a chemistry problem and they have to change the formulation of that cover a little bit to to get it to either stiffen up or, or do what needs to be done so that it doesn't tear. At that point, technically, it's not the same ball that they submitted to the USGA. And I have a feeling that's the kind of thing that's going to go unnoticed and nobody's really going to care about. But technically, that is a change to the ball. I doubt they'll resubmit. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the guy that's buying the Kirkland ball are one of two people. One that just walks into Costco and he's looking for five gallons of mayonnaise and uh, you know a year's worth of TP, and goes, oh shit, you know Costco balls on the end cap, right? I'm gonna grab these because they're fifth, you know a dollar a ball. Or it's the guy from that's a gearhead that's heard about it through a site like ours. And I think I don't know. I I just think they're gonna continue to sell this ball. I don't even know if they're gonna fix the problem. Yeah, I don't- I don't know if the uh, the average golfer would care that much. The one that shoots like a ninety to a hundred, he knows he's just out there and he's just out there to have fun. And there, there are segments of of golfers, including good golfers, who who feel like that they're being overcharged by the big ball manufacturers, right? Like Titleist shouldn't be charging forty five, fifty dollars a dozen, or Bridgestone shouldn't be charging what they charge, and and Shrixon shouldn't charge what they charge, and and the idea that a ball doesn't have to cost this much. It's only because they play tour, pay tour players that they, they get to this level. And look, yeah, Titleist could sell a ball for less and still make money. And, and the same is probably true for everybody. But there is sort of this, this revolving door effect, if you will, where, yeah, Titleist, Titleist sells more balls because they have a degree of popularity. That popularity is due in part to tour players that brings in more money, which they can then invest in machines that make a higher quality golf ball, machines that, that put a ball that does a cover on a ball without it tearing. 
Um, if we look at kind of just the one cutaway we showed at that uh, of the, the new Kirkland ball, we looked at that and we saw, all right, the, the casing layer is not just uneven, but it's almost to a degree and a part slightly, slightly football shaped, right? We saw a place where it looked like it was kind of pinched. So that's that's the, the glitch, possibly the glee bar machine that's supposed to make the ball perfectly round, not doing its job. Right. So like, again, more money means you can invest in better tooling to create a better product and, and around and around it goes. And so, yeah, you, you can pay less and get a ball. But look, we've seen it. There is a legitimate quality standard that is difficult to achieve. And in my mind, you know, if if having the same ball or damn near the same ball for every shot, every round is important to you, then yeah, you, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to pay for Titleist or Bridgestone or, or Shrixon or one of those hot brands to get that. You're not going to get that at $15 a freaking dozen. At the end of the day, it, com it comes down to this for me. Like, are there balls that perform as good as this for close to the same price, right? Yes. There's Ennisys. There's Snell, there's Bridgestone, there's Shrixon, there's balls out there that don't have this bad of a durability issue that performs similarly or just as good, right? So why? Yeah, and it's, I think I think with with golf balls, we need to start talking about them in two different way, ways, right? You you have a performance specification, right? So and that's where you you say things like, well, hey, I I tried this new ball and it performs as good or better than a pro v1 right and what you know that that's sort of a for me thing that becomes a well the launch characteristic i saw the spin characteristic the speed characteristic right for me those were they matched a a top ball but then you have a quality specification which is is things like you know is the core centered are the layers concentric is it is the ball freaking round um does the cover cut like butter right like these are these are not necessarily performance specifications. These are quality specifications. And that is a lot, at the factory, it's a lot harder to achieve a higher quality specification. And unfortunately for a golfer, for better or worse, and sometimes it doesn't matter, right? We acknowledge this. It's it's much more difficult to notice a quality specification. Well, here's what I've learned. Like since we dropped the bomb, I guess you want to call it, of the Kirkland original ball test, and we got inundated with phone calls of people in the industry that wanted to get in the golf business, it looked like something so just quick, easy, and fun to get into, right? Like, oh my God, any, I can put my logo on a ball and make some money, right? That's what it seemed to be right after the test, the amount of calls and emails we got. I, after all the stuff, not only that we've seen in the last year or so, but that you're finding on all the shipping reports from overseas, <laughs> I would never. What I, how I spend my days. Yes, I would never want to get into the golf ball business because even balls that. So talk about that really quickly. Like Costco basically takes over a plant now, right? Kind of owns a foundry that was not owned by Costco to some degree before, and that now is making other golf ball companies that were having their product made at that foundry have to go to a different tier ball manufacturer, not because they wanted to or chose to, but because they almost have to now because they can't just get out of the golf ball business now. Yeah, there, I mean, there are certainly, I would say sort of capacity issues and, and some of those capacity issues are, are forced. So if you look at one of the stories that we heard quite a bit, when, when the first Kirkland kind of took off, one of the responses was so that that first Kasich ball came out of Nassau, which is a factory that, in addition to producing the the majority of MTB balls, the the MTB Red being the exception, um, but for Snell uh, produces the cores, basically everything but the cover for the most part for for the tailor made TP5 ball, right? And so what happened, what we saw was as that that Costco ball sort of hit the market and emerged in popularity. Taylor made was like, all right, we're, well, you know what? We're going to, we're going to ramp up production here. We're going to, we're going to make more balls. We're right going to move you to the back of the line, basically. Exactly. Yep. You get to the back of the line. And that's why you saw not only Costco having fulfillment issues, but, but Snell had some inventory issues as well. And you see the same thing right over at, at Foremost where occasionally Vice and 
uh, Encore, who aren't probably the biggest customers there, get pushed to the back of the line and they have some inventory issues as well. And what's happening is the big guys are starting to exert pressure on these factories. And what it's doing is taking these these smaller direct-to-consumer brands and forcing them away from the tier one factories to tier two factories where, you know, if we're, we're being brutally honest, the quality probably isn't as good. And, and that makes it very challenging for somebody who wants to get into the ball business, who understands like, yeah, I'm not going to design my own ball, but I can I can get a pretty good ball from a factory and develop a brand around it. It makes it increasingly harder to get a pretty good or really good ball, uh, especially if you want to maintain inventory and have something you can sell. And so, I mean, the latest example, right? So we're seeing indications anyway that Cut, for example, got its balls from what is now SM Parker, which is making the, the balls for Costco. Uh, they're shifting they're shifting some of their production, if not all of their production. I'm guessing it's the new ball, right, that they just started selling. That's probably, I haven't seen the box, don't say this is absolute, but that's probably coming from the factory in Taiwan, which is now shipping a lot of product to Cut. So you're, you're seeing brands shift from factories as a result of major OEMs and then something like a Costco, which has major buying power and can and is willing to buy a lot of balls. So if you want to get into the golf ball business, <laughs> you might want to th think again. Um, it's not as easy as it once was and will ever be probably again. Uh, so back to just, you know, capture the essence of what we've seen so far. A lot of hype for good reason, around the new Kirkland ball because the old Kirkland ball was a really good yeah, golf cool. ball for really cheap. And the new good, the new Kirkland golf ball does seems to perform pretty well so far. Well, like I said, full results, ne results next if week. If you need more spin. Yeah, full results next week on the Kirkland ball test. But the cover issues is a non-starter for me. You know, I don't, you know, that's, it's up to you to do whatever you want. But for me, it's a non-starter. 